everyone. It's me, Laura, from The Papered Soul, and I'm coming to you with my second installment of uh, my journaling process, the process that I go through when I'm making a journal. And uh, my first installment was called um, Coffee and a Chat, my process for journal making. And so this is the second installment, and I'm, I'm gonna call this my second cup of coffee uh, for this installment, for the second part. And um, so I just wanted to uh, kind of show you what I've done since the last installment. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to it in the description below. I'm just going to make a journal, a traveler's notebook journal with uh, porch swing designs. That's Mary Lou. Uh, porch swing designs um, digital kit, Rosewood Cottage. I do want to say that she has extended her sale. She was having a sale um, on her digitals and she has extended it to go into November the 1st and she's having a 20% off sale. So keep that in mind um, and I'll show you this kit of hers. It's cut up now in the first installment I just showed it when I had just printed it out. We talked about printing options in the first one, different papers, thicknesses of papers and, and um, qualities of paper when it comes to your printouts and the kind of images that you get. Um, what I wanted to talk about today um, was basically the next part of the, the gathering. I call this the gathering process because once I have my kit and I've made a decision on the kit I wanna use, I'm gonna pull, um, I do pull out my coffee dyed papers. Um, that's just what I like to do. And then uh, I gather papers uh, from my, my little books, those paper pad stacks that we buy and um, try to find some that look really good with the kit. Um, so that's my process on that and I'm gonna what I'll normally do is I get my kit out and kind of lay it out in front of me So I can see a little bit of a number of the pages and get a feel for the colors and uh, shades of the kit and then I start flipping through and um, My, my uh, paper stack and then I will pull pages out um, I really enjoy that part of the process um, because it really sets the tone for what your journal is going to look like and, and the colors that you um, enhance with your journal. Let me just show you this real quick. I'm not going to take a lot of time. I will say my last one took a long time. No, I shouldn't say a long time because uh, it, it was a little bit of time, maybe 24 minutes or something like that. And to some of you, that might seem like really a long time. but. I had a lot to say and I and getting this started and just kind of showing you uh, and explaining to you what I was gonna do I just wanted to be real clear and thorough but I am gonna try to make my installments like this one I'm gonna try to make them a little bit um, shorter I don't I don't want them to be very long because I don't want you to get bored and I don't want you to to give up on me um, yeah, okay, so let me just show you, I'm a, and I, as I said, or as I, actually I recorded this a while ago, so I already said, said this, so I'm saying it again, but I pick out papers, and the part I love about it is, is choosing papers, because I never know what papers I'm going to end up with, and I'm always a little surprised. If I had flipped through the paper stack I, and looked at papers to pull, I wouldn't have pulled them had I not had my kit in front of me, and I, I never would have thought that I would have chosen some of these colors and some of these patterns. So it, I, but I loved using pattern papers with kits like this and everything. So this was kind of surprising to me, but I love it. And I really do think that these are gonna work. So it, I also wanna say it's a little scary putting these out to y'all because, and showing you before I actually have it in the, in the journal so that you, when it's, when a journal's already made, you can already see, you're, you know, you're like, yeah, yeah, that works. But when you're doing it in pieces like this and you're putting it together and you're showing someone your process, they might think, oh my gosh, there's no way I would ever use those pages. Well, these are the papers I chose. So this is kind of like a, a script, a pale minty, that's got some green, some pink. Um, I know that's the blues but it's, and some stripes. I never would have thought I would have used it, but I just feel bold, I wanna do it. That's a pop of uh, color that'll pull up, pull out those roses, and then this gray. Again, this is, I never saw this coming, but that's what I love about it, because when you start spreading your kit out amongst these colors, I hope you can see this, it, 
that really blends. It really blends. Look at that. So I, I, I think it does. And I hope y'all like it too. And again, just, just trust me and hang in there with me. Even if you think, gosh, I don't like her colors. If you think you don't like my colors, just hang in there with me because I really think it's gonna come together pretty. So I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, in the next installment, I'll have these cut um, and all of this folded. I thought I was already gonna have it done this time, but I realized my steps need to be a little bit smaller because every little thing takes time. I do pull in coffee dyed papers as well. So what I did is I measured her, um, the, the height, which was seven and three quarters high. And I think she's got it eight, her pages are eight inches wide. Your standard traveler's notebook uh, tends to be 8.25 by 4.33 when folded, okay? So I think a lot of people just round it to the 4.25 when folded um, and it just makes it simpler. Uh, plus, if you're going to use these as an insert into like a planner type traveler's notebook journal, um, it'll fit. And you have room to, to make your cover to cover all of this. Um, so I cut my, I took eight and a half by 11 copy paper, coffee dyed papers that I had. And I cut them to the height of the, the journal pages. Um, you can play around with the sizing of these kits and make them a little larger. Some will allow you to make them larger and, and then you can even shrink some. Um, I just kept it the way she had it. So we're just gonna go with it like that. Um, so I cut the, um, the top part off that way. So I had the long way uh, paper uh, set like that and then the height of it is this way. And the reason I did that, so the eight and a half in, uh, edge is, you know, the, t the eight and a half <laughs> is like this. So you see where I'm going with this. Your paper is gonna be landscape. And the reason I, and then I cut the top off. And the reason I do that is so that I can do some fun folding. Boy, I got tongue tied on that. Um, so you fold your pages over, and then um, I'm gonna do the, the folding here and how I did this the easy way I just took my full piece of paper and I just lined it up like this and then this I folded it again with the crease that was already this one was already folded and I creased it so then I have it like that and then I had this excess sitting out here so then I just folded uh, flipped it over and folded that back now I have a piece of paper that has a fun fold in it it will serve to cover the entire folded part uh, of the traveler's notebook and I have excess out here. If I wanted to use it as a pocket, flip or flip out, I can even fold, uh, flip it back this way. I could decide to, you know, put it this way. It's just however, however way you wanna do it. So I will probably, I think I have about four pieces of coffee dyed paper. I may add more or not. Once I get into my papers, I'm, um, I'm gonna cut them the same size as, as these. So I'm gonna do, you know, I'll just cut it the same tallness and the same uh, width because I may want to do some of the flipping that I do with these as well. Um, I may do some spray dye coffee on these. Now that I've chosen my papers, I may go ahead and, and cook them, spray them and cook them and do coffee dyeing. It does give them a good texture, so I may do that as well. Well, you know, I probably will, so we'll just see. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is the distressing. Um, this kit already has a lot of the vintage distress look on it. Let me put some paper behind it so you can see. Okay, so you've got the little brown edge there and everything. So she already has that in her design. And I found it to be really good because when I went to go ahead and, and do my um, distressing, it gave it a real nice rich uh, definition and everything. But you don't have to do it. Mary Lou wanted me to mention, you, you can, if you don't like that look and you don't want that look on this, you can cut that little brown edge off. You can distress with other colors if you want to, or you don't have to distress at all. Um, distressing just gives, for me, it gives it some definition. So you can see here on this side where I distressed with the brown, um, it just kind of frames your piece. And like I say, it gives it some depth. 
over here there's not there's nothing and that's fine if you like that look then that is absolutely fine and so i you know here's what i i did it with vintage photo you know so you can use whatever you want there's lots of colors out there so i just i cut all my pages out i just stressed all my pages i'll finish this one up so i left it as an example and um i've got all these pieces in the kit cut out they're all distressed as well even these little pieces that she she gave and when you start distressing you know it's really relaxing to me i mean I know a lot of people aren't really, they don't enjoy it and it's like boring to them, but just put something on TV and just watch it TV or just have some quiet time. You can do a lot of thinking, you know, when you're inking your, your items, it can help you with a lot of relaxing thinking time too. So anyway, but as you do it, you start, you pick up each piece and you're really, you know, looking at each piece and thinking, hmm, what can I do with this? What can I do? And ideas will start to come to you. Um... You know, as you're inking your pieces and you're becoming familiar with your kit. Um, she's just got so much in here. So it's just really a very all-inclusive kit here. These are the pieces that I had printed on a little bit sturdier cardstock. And these are, you know, some of uh, these are um, like these. I'm going to end up gluing them on uh, some cardstock. Uh, they're not as thick. And so I'm gonna glue them and I also like to sew around my tags. So what I will end up doing, I got me a blush color uh, cardstock, 110 pound. And what I'll, I'll start doing is picking out of the kit all the ones that I want to um, have a little bit sturdier. Like if this is a pocket, I don't want it to be flimsy. I want it, I want it sturdy so it can support what I put in there. Um, then there are uh, some like this, I'm probably gonna use this as a journal card and I want to sew around it. So I am, I glued that on. Um, when you glue something that you're not gonna sew around, make sure you get your glue around all the edges and get it glued on really well. On this one, when I glued it, I kind of just did it m mostly in the, in the middle and kind of maybe a quarter inch to the to the edge, but I didn't really worry too much about the glue coming right up to the edge because I'm gonna sew it. So that will take care of that and it won't go anywhere, I promise. So what I'll end up doing before it's over with, I will glue, you know, all my little pages down and everything like that and try to make wise use of this card stock so nothing goes to waste. And um, I'll let it maybe sit overnight or whatever and then I can sit down at the sewing machine and sew them, sew them all up at one time, you know, and everything. So that's, those are the types of things that I'll be working on. Um, and then when I come back, you'll see the progress that I've made and, and how the pieces are starting to change. I'll have the signature put together, not put together, sewn together, but put together in the order that I want them between my um, coffee dyed paper and then the uh, pieces that I pulled out to of my uh, stash and um, so I'll have it kind of in order. I don't sew my signature in until I am done um, basically decorating my entire journal and that's just the way I like to do it. Um, if you, for me, if I sew it in ahead of time before I decorate it, then I don't have much um, mo mobility. I like to, um, a lot of times, if I have my journal all folded up, I like to put it aside pull a page out that I'm working on, and that way I just have all the kind of freedom. So if you're gonna stamp on something, nothing's getting in your way and you're not being held back. Um, so that's my process there. So you've seen kind of some of my gathering process where you know I've got these prepped and inked, I've pulled my uh, paper stack pattern papers out, I've got my, um, my little coffee dyed papers, I've just gotta do the folding on them and we'll see what I come up with that. And then I'll get a lot of my tags and stuff glued and sewn and things of that nature. So we'll pop back in on cup number three, installment number three, um, kind of to see how I'm doing and what my progress is. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I am going to try to keep it short and not give a lot all at one time. And uh, just kind of pop in maybe a couple of times a week, two to three times a week on my progress. But I thank you for listening. And uh, again, check the description box below for any links um, I can give you for Mary Lou's shop, um, Port Swing Designs, and also my shop on Etsy and uh, 
my link for the first installment of this video, um, if or this video series, I should say, if it's something that you think you might want to be interested in. I think this is uh, probably really good for beginners, but I also believe that, you know, there might be something that somebody does, even if you're a seasoned journal maker, there might be something that somebody else does that you never thought about. And also, if I can have everyone being interactive and leaving comments and, and just being a community and talking about things and sharing tips and whatnot, um, then you may, we all may just, or I believe, we'll learn some things. So, But hopefully it'll just be a good, fun time watching this journal come together. So y'all have a wonderful day, and I thank you for your time, and take care. Bye.